Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, today I am with my 2019 Ram 1500 and I felt the need to go over a topic that has been absolutely just pounded into the ground over and over again. And today we're going to pound it into the ground a little bit more and we are going to be covering the infamous Hemitech. And sorry for the road noise, but I am doing this in the suburb so there will be some cars driving back home by me. So disregard the road noise. But just get back into it. So I just want to go over a few things that I have done to prevent the lifter tick from occurring. The exhaust tick, which is also another version of the Hemi tick, or at least mistaken for the true Hemi tick, which is lifter failure. The exhaust tick I did get, which is actually on my passenger side right here. My exhaust manifold cracked down the middle, and I was getting a really terrible ticking noise. I can tell the difference though between you know a mechanical lifter tick versus the exhaust tick. So I replaced those with AAP shorty headers and most of my exhaust leaks went away. I still have a little bit of a leak on this side from where the collector is and I just don't really care that much because I want to do long tube headers at some point anyway. But the more important tick is the lifter tick. And honestly the best way I think to combat this from happening is to disable the cylinder deactivation also known as MDS in these trucks. And Chevy has the same thing, older style was DOD, or displacement on demand, and AFM, which is the current, which is active fuel management. I'll probably go over that in a different video, because my father does have a truck that does use AFM, and he did have a significant amount of oil consumption, and it was nuts. So we'll go over that later on. But MDS. And the best way that I have combated this issue, honestly, is just being very strict with maintenance. Do your oil changes, about 5,000 miles, regardless of it being synthetic. If it says 20,000 miles, don't do it at 20,000 miles. Do it at five, do it at 10. Just be up with your maintenance. That's the best thing that you can do. And an extra step that I took further was in fact tuning MDS out of this truck. So I still have the MDS lifters and the MDS camshaft. So I still can technically drop cylinders, but I have it tuned out of the truck so it does not drop cylinders. I've also tried a couple different oils. I've tried Royal Purple, I've tried uh, the Mobile One Full Synthetic, and I've tried AMS Oil. And right here is what I still use to this day. It is the Redline 5W20. I've had the best luck with this oil overall. Uh, it was a significant difference in just quieting my valve trays down, so I continue to use this to this day. In fact, I'm actually due for an oil change soon. That's why I have it on me. And I always stuck with my Mobile One Full Synthetic oil filter. I haven't had any issues with this. The flow through these is great. It's recommended by the manufacturer to use these and haven't had any issues with them, so continue to use this as well. And it, once again, it's just beating, just absolutely beating a dead horse. Stay up with your maintenance and use well-known good products like Redline and Mobile One. And you probably won't have an issue. I mean, there are uh, plenty of times where like you can't control it. It's completely out of what you were able to do and it does fail, and it sucks, but it is what it is. But that's why I do this. I do this every week. It is the Repel Tick Defense. Um, you just kind of open up the hood and just give it a good old, just, just give it a, just get, get a give it. And then this also does help prevent the Hemi Tick. And one last thing I would like to go over regarding the Hemi Tick as well, is at least just some thoughts for anybody who does plan to modify this engine like I do. I do want to do a cam at some point. And I will be obviously replacing the collapsible lifters with the solid lifters and doing a complete MDS delete, and as well putting in the Hellcat oil pump. And I believe the Hellcat oil pump, because it has the ability to push a lot more volume of oil than the stock 5.7 oil pump does, that will also help with just lubrication and making sure that that never happens. So I think honestly, <laughs> That is super overkill, but that would probably solve that problem too. But these engines just are just known for having oil starvation issues in the top end of the engine, especially at idle, if you have long idle times, running crappy oil, or just being way overdue on maintenance. And obviously there are plenty of issues where it just will happen on its own, regardless of what you do, and that's just out of your control. But at least this is a good way to try your best to prevent this from happening. And I do want to show you one little trick if you do want if you do want to disable MDS, but don't have to. So I'll show you that real quick. So what you do is 
you go into the cab of the truck, and when you put it into drive, you use your gear selector to select your gears, and now you can go all the way up to gear eight. As long as it's selected to go to gear eight, your truck will not activate MDS, and it will use all of your eight gears. So that will disable MDS temporarily. You will have to do it every time you get back in the truck again, which is kind of annoying, which is why I, I went with the tune anyway. I just took it out. Um, but that is a way to disable MDS without actually needing to tune your truck. But that's all I got for you guys today. It's just a quick little video about uh, my experience with the Hemi-Tick. Luckily, it was just an exhaust leak and just some things and some products that I used to hopefully prevent it from happening in the line. Now keep in mind, these engines just by themselves are very noisy. I've just noticed that the valve train and the injectors are just loud in themselves, but it's not lifter tick, it's a different noise. I've had it forever. I've got 50,000 miles on this thing now, and I haven't had any actual issues with my valve train. They're just really, really noisy engines, and honestly, I'll be more concerned when it stops making all these valve train noises, because at that point, I feel like I actually have an issue. <laughs> It's because they're just really, really noisy trucks. But that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Please consider subscribing, giving it a like, and sharing it. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day because I am as well. Goodbye.